In 1964, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, working with a radio telescope at Bell Labs, discovered emissions that they couldn't account for in their data. The instrumentation they were using was very sensitive for its time, designed to detect radio waves bouncing off of echo balloon satellites. Those signals were weak and required the elimination of any interference possible from the signal. Yet, there was still a strange residual interference present that they were not able to eliminate or even account for. And they certainly tried. At one point, to try to account for everything they possibly could that might create the noise they were seeing, they evicted some pigeons that had taken up residence in the telescope's horn and proceeded to sweep out the accumulated droppings. Yet, the mysterious signal was still there, and more, it came from every direction they pointed their telescope in the sky eliminating anything local, and indeed, anything in our galaxy from the equation. Penzias and Wilson would come away with winning the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation, though it had been hypothesized to exist years before, when the question of the Big Bang versus the steady state universe had just started up. And there had been work published that showed that it should be detectable, and indeed, another team at the time was actively looking for it, but Penzias and Wilson nailed it, and by the 1970s, it was clear that the origin of the background radiation could only have been the Big Bang. But detecting the CMB is not actually as difficult as it might seem in hindsight. When you're stumbling across something or looking for something very specific based on limited data, it's one thing. Once it's found and can be studied, it's different. And it turns out that you can see the CMB on your own, though not very clearly. For this, all you need is an old television, the non-digital type that needs an antenna. If you have that, tune it to static. About 10% of that static is being caused by the CMB. But since the discovery of the CMB, studies of it have revealed a number of mysteries that might yield clues to some very big questions about the universe, the Big Bang, and even beyond. The first mystery is why the CMB is so uniform. It's almost perfectly so, almost. But it's important to note that there are small variations within it that are extremely important and interesting in and of themselves. More on that in a bit. But the reality is that the Big Bang should have been an absolute mess, but that's not what happened. Instead, it seems to have happened in such a way that now very distant regions of the universe somehow remained in contact during the early stages of the universe's expansion, allowing for the uniformity that we see today. This led to the idea of cosmic inflation to try to explain this, where the universe apparently went through a period of very rapid expansion. This creates a whole new series of questions, however. What caused inflation? Why did it stop? And while some predictions of inflation have been observed, not all of them have. But this may be a solvable mystery through the continued study of gravitational waves and higher resolution mapping of the CMB. But uniform is a relative term. As I mentioned, there are very tiny variations in the CMB that lead to even bigger mysteries that we may never know the answer to. And indeed, if these tiny variations hadn't been present, they even predate atoms, the universe would have been so flat and uniform that matter as we know it wouldn't have formed, and we would not be here. One mystery of the afterglow of the Big Bang that we very likely will never have an answer to lies in a certain peculiarity regarding temperature and habitability. About 15 million years after the Big Bang, it cooled sufficiently, but also remained warm enough, for the entire universe to become habitable for life. This epoch of habitability would have lasted several million years, which should have been enough time for life, in principle, to have arisen. This would have been a habitability much different than what we're used to today, but it's at least possible for microbial life to have gotten a brief foothold somewhere in the early universe under the conditions present. Complex life is highly unlikely, but very simple microbes? Maybe. Unfortunately, any evidence of this life, if it ever existed, is very likely long gone, and we will forever wonder about what might once have been. Another set of mysteries is the CMB's cold spots. Here there are two. First are the variations, tiny that they are, in temperature that may just be due to random fluctuations. But they seem awfully big for that, sort of at the borderline of what could be dismissed as random as opposed to what might be more than that. The problem here is that the standard cosmological model doesn't easily allow for non-random cold spots of this nature and size. 
which means if they are not random and represent some physical process that created them, then the standard cosmological model no longer quite fits. This would suggest new physics, and the problem with that is given that it's not understood physics and no good model has come out to explain it, then it's guesswork until new physics becomes evident if it exists. The other mystery involving cold spots in the CMB is a particularly odd one known as the CMB cold spot. This particular cold spot is unusual in comparison to most of the other cold areas of the CMB in that it's a cold spot, oddly large, but also surrounded by a comparatively hot ring. There are two main possibilities to explain this. One is that there is a giant supervoid, one of the largest structures in the universe if it exists, that is affecting observations of the CMB in this area. If this is indeed the case, it would be yet another indicator of the existence of dark energy for it to even be. Some studies, however, have called this into question, and the void may not exist, or may be illusory, due to some observational issues, or may in fact be a remnant of something primordial that occurred in the early history of the universe. But there is another option. It's also thought to be possible that it might actually be an imprint of another parallel universe. While controversial, the idea goes like this. Our universe was originally linked to another universe through quantum entanglement, but then they were separated by cosmic inflation. This would have left a mark, not unlike the CMB cold spot. This has enormous implications in that it would be the first evidence that parallel universes exist, but would also lend some support to the validity of string theory. The interesting thing here is that this idea should be testable, a similar hole should be found in the opposite hemisphere of the CMB, and lo and behold, there is some recent indications that this second hole might be there, though it is far from settled. The next mystery is here by popular demand. Indeed, I mentioned it briefly in a recent video and requests for more on it set a record for this channel. It is the axis of evil problem with the cosmic microwave background radiation. To get into this problem, tiny but important variations aside, it's best to go back to how uniform the CMB is. It's very, very uniform, and it's basically isotropic, meaning that it looks just about the same every direction you look. This also dovetails with the Copernican principle, where the universe more or less looks the same no matter where you are, and that Earth and the solar system do not occupy any particularly special location. This is an important idea that underlies a lot of our thinking about the universe. Trouble is, the CMB has tossed a wrench into this thinking, or so it appears right now. Here's how it goes. The statistical variations in the cosmic microwave background radiation can be worked out and studied using what's called a multipole analysis. You start with the hole, then break the CMB down into smaller bits and look for variations on each scale. The variations should be totally random and they were for the most part, but there was a pattern. The quadrupole and the octopole lined up in a certain way. That's odd, but far from impossible. Random alignment is weird, but the chances aren't that crazy for it just to have worked out that way by chance, but it gets worse. If you split the CMB into hemispheres, say north and south for clarity, and look at it all in relation to the plane of the solar system, the CMB is just a tiny bit cooler in one hemisphere as opposed to the other, and it lines up with both the orientation of the solar system and it lines up with the odd correlations of the octopole and quadrupole. This should not be given the Copernican principle and the isotropy of the universe. It should all work out to be the same. It doesn't, and it should definitely not line up with the plane of the solar system, which occupies no special place in the universe. The reality is that the CMB is far, far older than the solar system and shouldn't care how it's oriented. And there shouldn't be a related correlation or alignment between the quadrupole and the octopole, yet there is. This was a problem indeed, and one that a lot of physicists hoped would go away for the sake of simplicity, but it didn't go away. The initial observations which shed light on this were confirmed by a completely separate instrument. These oddities are really there. Now there are some proposed explanations that might cover it, but in truth all seem a little weak. One is pure chance. The whole thing is just a statistical fluke, story over. Possible, but a bit unsatisfying and would get weakened if any other correlations in this whole thing ever pop up. 
Another possibility is that something, probably related to the plane of the solar system, such as some cloud of material, is somehow interfering with observations of the CMB. But this has not been corroborated. Then there is the possibility of new physics we don't yet understand, but it's hard to see how that could be and still doesn't explain why it would line up with the solar system. So at this point, why certain features of the CMB align with our solar system remains perhaps one of the strangest unsolved mysteries of the universe. But there will likely be more mysteries regarding the CMB that will come to light as we study it closer. Most of these are still unknown unknowns, but there is one possibility emerging that might shed light on many of the mysteries we know and no doubt add in some new ones. It all relates to Dr. Roger Penrose, who has proposed an alternative cosmological model within general relativity known as conformal cyclic cosmology. The idea is this, instead of a single Big Bang and resultant universe, there are iterations where there is a cycle of Big Bangs and resulting universes one after another for infinity. A Big Bang happens, a universe exists and ultimately decays, and then another Big Bang happens. If this is indeed an accurate description of what actually occurs, which is disputed though there is some claimed evidence for it, it should leave a number of markers on the CMB after each iteration, including our own. One of these might be vestigial signals left over from the evaporation of supermassive black holes in the previous universe through Hawking radiation. But maybe there could be more. Penrose suggests that the CMB might allow for the transfer of information from a past universe to a current one, and that we might search for intelligent signals embedded within the CMB, left by the long-dead inhabitants of the last universe. I wonder what they might say. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing the CMB suspiciously. At first glance, it looks uniform, clean-cut, and overall upstanding. Yet, look a little closer and it all gets unsavory in an Eddie Haskell sort of way. Going to keep an eye on the CMB. And be sure to keep your eyes on my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.